Thank you for joining us today. We're going to be talking about TPM initialization on an HP Envy 17T laptop. So the first thing I want to do is power this machine up and before I initialize I want to take a look at this computer and get an inventory of what it is because anybody else watching this video from your perspective the HP Envy 17T is one thing but if you're on a different platform this is also applicable to what you might be doing. So what I'm going to do is inventory this machine with Bellarc Advisor once I power it up. Then we're going to run the test which will be the uh, Why Not Windows 11 from GitHub. Once we verified that that's the only thing we had to do is we've gone down that list. Then the next thing is going to be to go into the BIOS and enable that feature. So let's get this machine up, turn it on. Now we've already run Bellarc Advisor on this computer so we're going to call up that report and what we're going to focus on is the processor. We have an Intel i7-8550U. This is an 8th generation i7 processor. So an 8th generation, that's key and important to know. i7-8550U launched Q3 of 2017. What I'm doing is just verifying information. One, I, I run the Bellarc Advisor report so I know it's in the computer. Two, so that we know we are running an 8th generation processor. Generically for those that are trying to run this test to see if you're compatible with Windows 11, which is all about the uh, TPM initialization, that's why I'm going through this methodically. So I have an idea of what I've got. This gives me an idea of other machines I'll be working on as we do TPM initialization for those other platforms. Because after this, we're probably going to take a look at an Intel NUC that's about four years old and see what it's got. I expect it's going to work, but I want to verify. So right now, we need to run that test. The test is why not Windows 11? We've already run the test on three other computers. So let's run the test now on this computer. Everything's going to check out, except this is interesting. This is the second time I've run this test. The first time it uh, said TPM was OK, but it did not show that TPM2 was detected. This time it does. So everything is good to go. So all we have to do is go into the BIOS and enable that feature. So I'm, I'm stoked. Now because we're on a laptop, I'm not going to be able to show you on the screen like I can with a desktop because of HDMI out. So what I'm going to have to do is uh, turn this to a camera so I can show you what's going on. It is what it is. Third time's a charm. What I'm going to do since I can't catch it fast enough is I will shut it down and once it shuts down when I bring it back up I'll show you the keyboard sequence then we'll bring a camera in and, and show you there may be a reflection I'll do the best I can escape got it F10 fantastic okay we're in the BIOS if you notice under main we're gonna click over to the security tab under the security tab we have TPM device and TPM state and clear TPM we're gonna to go to TPM device on the right, it says TPM device available. Press enter, available. Press TPM state, enabled. Now we should be able to go back into Windows, go to the device manager, and we should see a TPM device. Let's go find out. So now what we need to do is reboot the computer, go back into Windows, check device manager. So we'll press F10 to save. Save changes, yes. And as soon as we get back into Windows, we'll take a look at Device Manager. It would be nice if laptops had a way to switch the displays, but the problem is the external display, which is HDMI, does not initialize until the computer's up and running. Some of the old laptops had that. Most of the new laptops do not. In fact, most of the new laptops don't even have a way to switch to the high-performance uh, display adapter, which is kind of annoying. It's on an application basis. Another video. Okay, we're coming back into Windows. As soon as I see it on the monitor, then I can take you to that. Let's check Device Manager. So we'll go Control Panel, Device Manager, Security Devices, and there's our TPM, Trusted Platform Module 2.0. So now we want to go back, verify with the test, just to make sure everything's good to go. We're going to run the tool again, and everything should check out okay this time. And we're good to go. TPM version, TPM 2.0 detected. So to reiterate what we've done, we've checked the architecture. The CPU is good. The boot method, which is in the BIOS, is unified EFI. Our CPU is an 8550, which is about four years old. 
four cores, eight threads. DirectX is good. GPT, which is the disk, not MBR, is selected. We only have 16 gigs of RAM. Secure boot is enabled. And our TPM, TPM 2.0. So what we have done for Windows 11 is we have verified all the components are compliant and our specifications meet the qualifications for Windows 11. All we can do now is wait. As far as the upgrade, it looks like there will be a free upgrade. Again, the time frame we're looking at, crystal ball forecast, around six months, which would put us right at CES. This will be the big talk at CES, where the CES is virtual or real. We're good to go for Windows 11. I want to thank you for watching. This is Builder By. My name is Gil Boyd, and we'll see you in the next video. Coming up, we're going to do TPM, I believe, on an Intel NUC. On to the next video. Stay tuned.